this is cool. Yeah, this is big. Give me. Let's try again. Let's do it like that. Okay. And now, click here. Click F11. Yeah, we're there. Awesome. Okay. Um, give me a second. I will just uh, fix it on my screen and we can start. Okay. Um, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so yeah, uh, um, I'm gonna present what we are doing uh, within Calyptra and where Calyptra goes. Uh, we don't have that much time, so I won't go into very details. Uh, just uh, show directions, what new is happening, where you can find more details and how to get more info on, on all that stuff. Okay, so for those who don't know what Calyptra is, Calyptra is a uh, initiative uh, collaboration between uh, quite a big companies, you probably know them, like Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, Nvidia, and AMD, uh, focusing on building uh, open source root of trust. Uh, basically, the whole effort started in, in uh, OCP, OCP stands for Open Compute Project, but the whole development happens in Chips Alliance, so most of the links that are here in the presentation and will probably be later on the, on the webpage, uh, leads to Chips Alliance GitHub and then you can find the code there. Uh, so basically, uh, the default target uh, originally was to build like a, a open source core that you can simply put into your bigger design, into your software design. Uh, it uses Veer EO2 CPU core, it's also open source core uh, that you can find on the, uh, in, in uh, Chips Alliance GitHub. Uh, and uh, the, the design itself reuses a bunch of Open Titan peripherals. Uh, open Titan is uh, another project uh, focusing on open source root of trust. Uh, they develop a uh, bunch of cores, bunch of peripherals uh, that are really high quality and we simply reuse them uh, in, in Calyptra. Uh, so just a few words on Chips Alliance. I mentioned that the, uh, most of the development work happens in Chips Alliance. So Chips Alliance is a organization under Linux Foundation, basically focusing on uh, building um, open source tooling, open source cores, standards uh, for uh, open source ISIC, uh, basically digital analog development. Uh, there is a, quite a few projects, one of them is of course Calyptra, but also Chizo is, is uh, developed under Chips Alliance and quite other things, uh, so if you, if you go to the web page, you can find all of them. There's quite a few members uh, there. I just listed some of them. So you can see all the four uh, collaborators within, Calip uh, within Calyptra projects, so AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft. We're also there, but also other companies. Uh, and you know, together, all, the, all those companies chip in to, to basically work on, on open source uh, uh, designs, tools, cores, and, and to make, make it all better. So what do we do in Calyptra? We're not one of the four founders. Uh, we're, uh, we're like kind of outside uh, and we joined the, the effort there. So basically we, as a micro, we are mostly responsible on getting uh, the whole design to, and the whole tooling around it uh, to the state where uh, people can easily contribute and people can easily uh, develop and work with the, with the code. So basically that, a huge chunk of that is actually unifying the workflow. Uh, unifying the workflow by introducing and, uh, and making better open source tooling around it. Uh, because you never unify the workflow if everybody will be defaulting to the proprietary versions uh, of the tooling uh, within their companies. Even if they are using the same vendor for the tools or course, they will have like a different versions and, and you know, there will be small differences. So, Basically, uh, that's one of the goals we, uh, we are responsible for, for unifying the flow and actually making the tooling around better so that uh, any, like the major uh, users can actually use the same flow and people from the outside can, re <coughs> sorry, uh, can uh, reuse that and, and uh, basically work the same way. We also maintain uh, the CPU core that is used within Calyptra, so that's Veer uh, EO2, so basically that's a, 32 bit uh, risk five CPU. Uh, so most of the work that happens within Veer is right now uh, driven by us. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, somewhere in January, like as I was at the beginning of this year, uh, Calyptra had a, a first major release, Calyptra 1.0, uh, 
Um, so the release candidate happens like in November last year. Uh, the, the release candidate uh, process ended uh, in January. So since January we have a release like a, a RTL code uh, that you can simply grab and use. That code um, uh, is a fully functional root of trust IP uh, that you can simply grab uh, and integrate within, uh, within your bigger SOC. Uh, it has been typed out by, uh, by the uh, members of, of, uh, of the Calypso project. Uh, I suppose they are right now you know, either testing that or waiting for the production. Uh, I don't know the details here, but, but I suppose you know, that's the typical flow. Uh, so uh, basically the core itself, you can simply put it into, your, into a bigger design, uh, connect the uh, communication interface that happens through mailbox, so basically you just write, uh, you just need to be able to write to the mailbox and of course read from the mailbox uh, the data back from, from the Calypso core. You need to provide all the connectivity like you know, clock sources, entropy sources, all that stuff, but in general you can grab the, uh, the design and just use it. It also comes with the software, so you don't have to worry about the software itself. And if you're interested in whatever, like uh, how certain uh, attack mitigations are implemented and what standards are, uh, are used like uh, uh, within the design, you can simply refer to the documentation, it's all there. Uh, I would have to have like yet another hour to, to actually go through that. That's, there's a lot of uh, stuff to discuss there. So uh, uh, it would be just simpler to, to just, just uh, go there. Uh, one of the cool things is that uh, this project actually uses uh, RDL for register file description. If you don't know RDL, you can, uh, you can just, just read uh, about it from, uh, it's, there's a lot of open source tooling around uh, system RDL, and it's really cool language for like the script uh, for for designing register files and then generating the code around. Um, if you want to know, like listen a bit more on the on the Calypso itself on the on the current status, you can watch last year's presentation from Michael from OrConf. Um, uh, back then we were I think at point eight version, so it's not about one one zero, uh, but uh, uh, it's more or less accurate to to one zero. Uh, so, once 1.0 was, was uh, released, uh, the work started on, on getting to 2.0, and 2.0 actually introduces uh, quite a big change. So, beside the core itself, like the core that you can integrate with the new SOC, there's going to be a SOC uh, that implements the core plus additional CPU, uh, like general purpose CPU, uh, some cores around uh, for like connectivity with the outside world, um, and uh, uh, additional i3c uh, core to be used to actually talk to the peripherals within the uh, within the server infrastructure. So basically, we typically use i3c nowadays to talk to the other controllers on the on the server side. So the core itself, the subsystem uh, that the uh, SOC uh, looks more or less like that. So if you want to see the code, you can go to GitHub to Alliance Calyptra subsystem uh, repository and. Um, it's, on, uh, it's under heavy development right now. So uh, you can look through the code. Probably you shouldn't grab it and use it uh, unless for like uh, playing around with it. But uh, uh, I wouldn't really tape it out at this point. Uh, but, but you can, can of course, uh, look there. So what it implements, it implements the Calypso core itself, like the one similar to we have if in 1.0 and 1.1, uh, which improves a bit on, on a, like fixes a few few bugs found in 1.0 uh, it implements uh, additional CPU additional core uh, view ER2 core where you can run your own software beside the software in the secure part of course it has all the communication between secure and and non-secure uh, parts additional peripherals like uh, QSpy controllers like UARTs all that stuff that you need to, to actually interface with the rest of the world. I3C core that I mentioned, and I will be talking a bit more on that. And one of the biggest one of the bigger changes is that we have a, a AXI interface right now, AXI based to connect within this. Uh, that's contrary to uh, to what Calyptra core was using because Calyptra core is using uh, AHB. Uh, so we, we use here uh, AXI mostly to have like a more control on access, like, like to be able to uh, control which peripheral, which, which uh, controller of the bus can actually access certain peripherals. Um, the I3C uh, control that I mentioned, it's a 
totally new development. Uh, we started writing it from scratch and uh, implementing it from scratch. And this is mostly on Micro's work right now. Uh, it is open source. It's uh, on Chips Alliance GitHub. So you can just go there, check it. It implements both controller and target, uh, I3C targets. So basically, you can simply grab it and try to integrate uh, with, with your design. It's not really Calypto specific, it's generic I3C core. Um, that one is still under development, so not every uh, functionality is already in place, but a lot is at this point, and you can, you can simply uh, use it. It basically follows the standard, uh, I3C standard, whatever is uh, within, uh, within the uh, MIP Alliance uh, sta I3C standard. However, it is extended with uh, a few additional registers, a few additional functionalities needed to implement something called OCP recovery flow. That's basically a functionality described and, and uh, uh, specified by op uh, Open Compute Projects, allow you to uh, stream a firmware into this uh, system so that it can boot it. In of course, as QA. So uh, that's that's pretty cool feature. And if you have it in the server, you have the I3C uh, bus. You can actually like start the recovery flow and reflash or revive uh, any any uh, device that is there. Uh, of course, used when you uh, detect like there is a you know a malformed uh, program or program is uh, somehow like the, you, you can detect like attack for 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 a device and then you firmware that you already have is compromised, you can start the recovery uh, procedure using that one. So, so we implement those additional functionalities that is needed for that. Uh, so once we switch to Axie in the, uh, in the subsystem, we needed new verification flow for the Axie because uh, originally Calypto was using AHB. Um, so you know, there was already a bunch of code for, for simulating that. Um, we, uh, and now we, we needed uh, something for Axie. So uh, basically, most of those uh, companies that, that uh, work within and use Calitra, uh, they do use UVM verification flow, like, like you know, uh, kind of standard uh, in, in those type of, of projects. Uh, fortunately, there is an open source verification IP, UVM verification IP. Back in the days, like a few years back, Western Digital released Axie VIP, verification IP written in UVM uh, on a permissive license. That's, uh, as far as I remember, ISC license. Uh, and it's there. On GitHub, you can simply grab it. The problem was that it uses a bunch of features, like system overlock features, that uh, neither non-open source simulator could actually handle. Like, th there was a, uh, you know, Kind of typical. If you write a, a verification flow, you just use like whatever language gives you. So that's what they use. Uh, okay. Um, so so uh, fortunately, uh, as you probably know, we've been working on ex extending uh, Velator with a bunch of uh, new functionalities. And uh, for us, that wasn't a problem. For us, it was a just new challenge. Like, okay, we need to improve the tooling. And this is what we did. We actually improved the uh, Velator to a state where we can actually run this Axie. Uh, verification IP, we can run the test based on that. Uh, that included uh, like constraint randomization, uh, some very complex features in, in system verlock, and if you want to play with it, it's already there. Uh, you, can, you can simply go to GitHub and, and grab it. Uh, I think one pull request is still pending in Verlator itself, but uh, the functionality is there, you can, you can run it. Uh, on the CPU side, since we are moving to uh, uh, MCU, the, the bigger SLC, and you can possibly run a user code that on that, like some, some custom code from the outside. We had to introduce a few extensions. One of them is a uh, user mode extension. So basically that's a um, risk five user mode. So at this point you can configure the, uh, the CPU itself to, to have like machine and user or just machine, uh, whatever you, you, you prefer. And of course that comes with a bunch of new registers, a bunch of new functionalities and stuff like that. And uh, on top of that, we had to extend uh, PMP to actually implement SME PMP, PMP uh, and uh, write a bunch of, uh, bunch of tests around. So that's mostly, of course, using Velator, RISC-5DV, but also uh, instruction set uh, simulation level uh, with Renote and stuff like that. Uh, we wrote a blog note about it. You can read it. 
that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, there is a talk pull request pending, at least today in the morning it was still pending. Uh, it should be much soon, it got all the accepts, so, so it should be there. Um, uh, to increase like our visibility in the project, uh, we also worked on like publishing coverage report. We, also, we always had this data, uh, but it was never published in a way that was, was human readable for any, any user on the web. So right now it is. Right now there is a online documentation where you can just go, go uh, read through it, see the verification numbers uh, on certain blocks, certain areas. And those verification flows are actually done automatically with open source tools. That's publicly, uh, that, that's one in public runners and proprietary tools in some secret runners where we just get the data and uh, show the data. Uh, as I said, we, also, we developed a flow enabling some, some simulation of the software and verification of the software. Uh, for that, we also, uh, we, we use for instruction level, instruction set level simulations and cost simulation with RTL, we use uh, Renault Open Source Simulator. There will be a presentation on cost simulation features tomorrow given by Peter. So stay uh, until tomorrow and then just, just uh, you will know more about that. But uh, since we are using RDL for describing the register files, we implemented uh, a tool or extension to Renault that allows you to uh, very like, easily generate simulation models from a given RDL file. Uh, and uh, like aside to, to the main uh, work in the, in the core itself, in the RTO itself, uh, we are working on a tool called Designer and Microcom. You can actually go there and then visit the site. This is a portal, a tool that collects data, uh, collects information about very complex systems and allow you to actually go through it and then see whatever is there, how it works, what are the components, what are the features, where to find the code, where to find the documentation, how they are connected, stuff like that. So actually, uh, Calyptra is one of those like complex socks. It is there, you can just go to the web page listed here, browse through it, see the Calyptra itself. Uh, from those blocks, you can actually go to the coverage reports, uh, to the source code and, and you know, all that stuff. And if you happen to be uh, in Vienna next week, uh, there's gonna be a Chips Alliance Hardware Mini Summit collocated with Open Source Summit. Uh, uh, and on Thursday, I'm also giving a talk on Calyptra, probably with all the more details on the technical stuff. Uh, but so if, you, if you're going to be there, please join us there on this, on this conference. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. All right. Hello, hello. Hello, thanks for the talk. Um, System RTL looks really cool. How, uh, how hard was it to port the open uh, Titan IP over to System RTL? Uh, that's actually, it was a quite, quite some, some work because uh, we kind of had to, if you look at the code, uh, how, the, uh, how the peripherals were imported, uh, the whole front end, like bus front end, uh, had to be replaced uh, because uh, originally in, in uh, in Open Titan, there is uh, basically generated. First of all, there is a different bus. There is a, a tile link ultra uh, light, but uh, uh, there is also this generated piece of code that actually uh, generates the whole interconnect based on adjacent. So all of that had to be re removed, and all of that had to be replaced with uh, system RDL register description, and this code is rendered generated with a, a system RDO uh, to, to link around it. Uh, but also it generates software on top of that, like low-level accessors, uh, also verification, uh, verification, system log verification uh, wrappers, and, and basically uh, some like uh, uh, test flows for, for those registers uh, and uh, documentation at the same time. So, so that's pretty cool. And documentation is actually pretty nice because it's, uh, uh, it, it's interactive. You can just write certain values to, to the web page and you get like a whatever it actually sets in the register. So that's, that's nice for debugging even. You can just dump a register and write the value there and see what happened. Yeah. Cool, Carol, I'll, I'll ask a question if I may. Um, I'm interested in the fact that Open Titan and Calyptra exist, which to me indicates that there is some interest um, from you know different companies in having completely open source root of trust. Mm -hmm. 
Can you say something about, if, if, if you're aware, of the kind of the people who are using this and in what application and what motivates them to actually develop it in an open source collaborative manner? So the, the big companies, they, uh, if you look at the names there, uh, they typically uh, compete with each other. Like, uh, you know, they, they, they don't work together uh, on, on the different projects. Mm. Uh, but if you think of like, in the end, they have to build uh, data centers. Uh, and then uh, Calypto work uh, is, is uh, mostly focused on, on data centers, yeah? like, like on, on usage of this uh, IP in data centers. Uh, so they have to work on data centers. They have to build data centers. They don't build the uh, hardware for data centers themselves. So they have to buy it from the outside. Mm. Uh, and if you buy something that uh, is uh, somehow uh, like you have the, the whole root of trust, like you have the whole secure boot and you, you care about the security, but you have to be sure that the very first instruction that you run on your CPU is actually secure. Mm. But if you bought this from some like a kind of a vendor that came from different country, from different part of the world and you know, uh, you have no control over it, mm. you're never sure if, if it's really root of trust if you can trust the very first instruction. Uh, so that's why they, they built actually open source versions of that. And uh, uh, in the end, you have to collaborate to create a standard. Uh, otherwise, uh, there would be like a you know, Microsoft standard, Google standard, Nvidia standard, Meta standard, and whatsoever. Uh, and uh, they will be all explaining like uh, ours is the best and nobody will show whatever is inside. With open source uh, implementations like Open Titan and Calyptra, you can actually you know tell like I want my data center computer like like my server to be delivered with this particular uh, core because that's that's a standard and everybody can see the standard and, and anybody can actually audit it and say like uh, you know here and here uh, you have a bug please fix it yeah and, and stuff like that yeah? so so in the end it's more on uh, creating a standard and actually from their perspective, saving money on, uh, on, on making sure and testing in the end things that, that uh, ensuring that you know, the whole flow is actually secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a, a fascinating approach and I think quite a radical departure from the way implementations were done in the past, right? You know, non-collaborative, you know, not in a collaborative manner, mm -hmm. perhaps for the standard, but certainly not for the implementation. And, uh, and yeah, it's really interesting to see, so, uh, yeah, cool. Um, any other, well, one more thing, Greg? Hey, thanks for the talk. I, I just wondering if you go into a bit more detail as to what the Calyptra MCU subsystem, what, what part it plays, it, what part it plays. Like, is it intended to be a discrete chip? Is it just something else that you plug into a larger SOC? Uh, it's a discrete chip in the end, yeah. Cool, I think I'll answer the question. Cheers. <laughs> All right, Carol, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. That is next.